Kona. Hey guys, mind if I ask a question about 222Y? It's the Poetica. Yeah, sure. Hey, how's everyone doing? We're hey, doing so great. today, I, I got really intrigued by 222Y because I was looking at their last two days um, uh, options trading, and they made like a million dollars each day. Are, are you kidding me? I mean, and they paid out a dollar when we were saying they weren't going to even pay out this month, right? I think they had a bad week the other week, but they recovered so well. Does anybody think, like, I think this one, do you think it can regain its, um, its nav again after the payout? I think it can. Yeah, but it's going to go up when, when QQQ go up. When the NASDAQ 100 go up, right now the NASDAQ 100 is trajectory down, except today. So, uh, did you see uh, the post in the Twitter by Airborne where mm -hmm. he had summarized the trades? Yep. And how yeah, I did. I, did, I did see that, but then I went back and looked at the website and looked at the trades they were doing and compared it to the prices of what was coming up in the last two days, Monday... And today, they made a million dollars each day. They make the money each day. They do the zero DTE. So it's not like um, where they do it weekly, like yield max. So it's a You're little right. bit different. Mm -hmm. Airborne has done even that two trades that you're talking about where they grossed more than a million dollars. Um, and uh, if, you, if you have seen that, right you would know that basically like... Um, my question to that post was, l based on the last week's performance, they said we were down, right? My question is, this is like one whole month, four weeks. What happened to two other weeks trade? We were on yeah, plus. Exactly. I didn't see anything. So that's why I went to see the last two days, because I, I only saw one week, and I said, wait a minute, that's only a week. And then, amazingly enough, and I don't think that QQ2 has to go up that high. It just has to stay a little even. And I think what's going to happen is, over time, their premium trades doing the covered call is going to make them money. Even if QQ2 doesn't go up very fast, you're going to still get the full dividend. Right? They'll, they'll continue to get the premium for selling the trades. Yep. Yeah, so I'm looking at Airborne. If you look at my uh, the, uh, the screen in my... Uh, you the stream here if you click on it I'm looking at it so you can see the same screen so today 1031 uh, they had 104 contract and they made a million dollar okay but there's six six million seven hundred share divide that by the, the dollar so essentially he's saying that we're max profit per share is about 16 cents so they already made 16 cents out of like the dollar you know you know yeah, they cents. also did it on Monday, right? They did the same thing on Monday. Well, that's ten thirty-one. That's today. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I I don't track it every day, so I don't know. But I'm just saying, yeah. So that they're doing really well. Uh, but there's gonna be time where they're gonna lose money too. Uh, where yield sure, max. I mean, the whole the whole last week. I understand that, but basically, he showed us that the whole week was bad. So how did they do so well? All the other three weeks to pay out a dollar. That's the question I have. Well, man, if we know the answer, we all will be rich. No, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's. That's what that's what the market does. I mean, it just, it, they just, they just playing the market, and the market's in their favor today. It's like today it went green. Yeah, but I'm thinking that even better than the QQQ itself. If as long as QQQ stays like, pretty much like, level. For the rest of the year, you'll still get huge payout from QQQY. So I think there is an op there's a, an opportunity to actually grow with QQQY as well as get a high yield. If QQQ, well, in yeah, no, no, I mean, don't confuse. I mean, don't confuse. QQQ is mostly growth. We're looking at income, right? No, I understand that, but I'm thinking that because QQQY is is doing it this way. I think they're going to also get a lot of income um, this year that will match the growth if the growth stays at a level because they think we're ready. We've hit the high of the year. They yeah, don't think we're, we're going to go much higher. I don't think we, I don't. I don't think we're disagreeing with you. We don't have enough history oh, okay. to. Okay. We don't have enough history to to speculate, even to analyze, even to theorize. There's just not enough history. 
Right, I, I understand that, but I'm just saying, like, what does the group think about this? Do we think that it'll regain, that this dividend they're going to get tomorrow, which I actually bought into, yeah. um, we can regain that uh, right away? I, 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 what as a group is, it's too early. It's like just two months we have seen. Um, and we we are all excited with their performance, what they can, you know, do in terms of dividend. At the same time, we also acknowledge the risk. Like in one week, we saw like uh, how bad it can go. So we are going to take it with a pinch of salt, I guess. Uh, we see the yeah. upside, also the the risk involved in it. Yeah, their trading okay. methodology, guys, opens you up to a very different projection. You know, in in the yield max funds, because they create synthetic positions they're able to shift if you will through time when they're seeing their big proceeds versus their big losses the zero day to expiry you know trades if you've listened to their ceo speak she's she's mentioned that you know historically on those indices you still run like a 60 some odd you know maybe near 70 yeah. percent success rate and that success rate could come evenly spread out with losses, but it could come in daisy-chained victories with daisy-chained losses. So you're probably, you're just catching, you know, the the um, the difference, if you will, between the shifts in, in NAV and the shift in, in share price that you're going to see with the two different um, strategies. I, I agree with you, po you know, Poetic. I mean, realistically speaking, if... If you tread water, so to speak, they should make plenty of dividend because they capitalize on that disproportionately large, um, what we call slippage when you're moving in and out of option trades. They're they're catching a, a unbalanced, large premium because of being so close to the money. So when they get that stagnation, they're going to make tremendous income. And when they get a... a a slight gain or a slight or even steady bullish they're still going to make that income it's only when things roll against them persistently and sharply because they're only short-term expiries that they're going to have no answer and they're just going to eat it you know when when the market backpedals on them dramatically there is no play other than well today sucked and let's move on to tomorrow I see. And and actually the more and if if they move if the market moves straight up very fast, they won't capture that um complete move. However, I feel like there's more days I see the QQQ going more sideways than it does going five percent up or five percent down, right? So probably more often than not, if we don't go down all the time, um we probably will get a pretty good uh return, I think. Let's see what happens. It's exciting. I'm just saying it's very exciting. It, it definitely is. And there is a, a way to at least historically test that. If, if you have back testing software, you can simply back test the methodology that they're performing. You're never going to replicate it perfectly because you're not the actual trader making the live in the day decisions. But it'll give you a general idea of what those trends will do. And, you know, the reason the fund's probably in existence is because even without a tremendous amount of expertise, they're going to come out ahead more often than they're not. You're 100 percent right. That's just that's just the historical average of dealing with an index that either languishes or progresses, and without calls being sold against the written puts. You know, they, they, there is no automatic topside lockout like there is with the yield max positions. If I understand their philosophy correctly. Oh, that's so even better. If they're moving in a sharp upside, then you just gaining it but you're only gaining it quote unquote it based on the puts you sell for the day that's the thing they don't have an underlying holding they're not creating a synthetic position the underlying is just the treasuries if i remember correctly so they don't really care it really it, it's it's a very clever mechanism and you 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 should be excited because if it works as well as it seems like it's going to there will be dips and i think more so yeah than the other funds, you may get that occasional shoddy yep. distro, you know, for the month, but you will see heavy handed distributions on the other months. Thank you. you Thank you, you guys. Will. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's very, very clear. Um, I think um, there's something to be 
stud for this uh, this style. It, it it first seems like it's risky, but if you think about it, how many times has the Nasdaq or QQQ moved five percent in one day? They never do, and yeah. these ones aren't looking a week out; they're looking a day out. So you it just have to not move in one day five percent, and we're good. They're playing the numbers, and you have to have you know their level of discipline to pay them well, and and you have to have deep enough pockets that don't forget. You know, if I tell you that three out of ten times when you flip a coin, you're going to get heads and the other seven you're going to get tails. If you're a betting man, it's very important not only when you're going to get those heads, you know, not that you're going to get three, but what order you're going to get them in. Because if you chain the seven wins up front, well, then you're going to bet less on the three losses because you know they're coming. And every win that you have going forward increases the odds that, the loss is coming. Like if, if, if the probability and the odds make any sense to you, like, you, you know, um, that is something that bears, uh, bears repeating. Like it's very difficult to do what they're doing is what I'm actually saying. Cause as a small person, you've got to be extraordinarily disciplined with your expenditures because if the losses should happen to come in succession, you won't have enough to make good on the wins that are coming in the end. But they're very disciplined, and I mean, obviously, it's early. Like Padma said, we'll see over. But the I mean, all we're doing is buying into it and just waiting for the dividend to come. We don't care about you know what they're doing. They're disciplined. Let them be disciplined. You know? that, that, that's my Our point. Yeah. Is just buy it and wait. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. It's their job, so let them do their magic, and then let's profit off it. That that's that's that, the guy. That's pretty you know? much all of them is like that. Didn't matter what fund it is, because you're you're paying the expert to do a service to give you the return, that you don't have to do it. Because... 100%. Yeah. So that's true for yield max. That's true for crane share. Uh, that's true for defiance. That's true for the new rec share. That's that's new for the Bally, you know, the iShare guys. That's new for the, you know, every, every single fat buy, every single income, the word income, uh... Co cover call, strategy, option call, whatever you want to call it, you know, you're essentially paying for that service. That's that's where the the expense ratio come in. So uh, that's why they're charging you like a you know one percent, you know, or one point ten percent in some cases, you know. Uh, so that yeah, I I you know. I, but however, you know, my, my it's I don't think it's ever gonna be like QQQ, like three hundred fifty dollar. No, I don't think so. You know, an income fund is never. I I don't I don't foresee any income fund growing beyond their price range. You know, they're gonna they're gonna be range bound uh, to some some price somewhere. You know, I don't know what that is yet because we we don't have a long history in any fund. Except QYLD and 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 maybe X XYLD and and Chap B, that's the closest thing to have a to see what the price range is. But yeah, and I did notice I did notice that their dividend, even though it was very high, I mean, QQQY was one, and I think um, JEPY was point nine one. Mm -hmm. And I think though, even though like they're very high, they were still lower than the prior. So I wonder if that trend will follow. But I think if you play the averages, it should be pretty good, right? If you play the averages, I'll yeah, that, that's why we're all here. That's why we're all here. All of us, all of us in this channel, are going after that high yield numbers. Right. Point a, considering the last month volatility, what we got, we should really give it to the team. Yeah, so uh, interesting. Um, does anybody else want to jump in and, and have a comment on QQQY or any other funds? Uh, Kamar, keeping yeah. aside the excitement that we have and the enthusiasm that we have, right? We believe in all high high yield income yeah. funds that we cut discuss. The Wall Street and the mainstream media commented on the strategy very differently, which is. It is equivalent to picking a dime from a steamroller. Uh, yeah, I mean, they may be right. We can't predict the future. But however, I'm, I'm willing to gamble. I'm willing to gamble on a few things. 
um, it's easy for a rich person to say uh, nitpick something, but when you when you start out with only a thousand dollar and you're trying to get rich, what do you, what do you what do you get to lose? You know, I mean, if if I'm moving a million dollar into this investment, I'm not going to do this investment because I already have a million dollars, so I need to protect it. But if I if I start with a a thousand dollar, that's what ninety percent of us here start with somewhere, start with very little money, and we say, okay, um, here's a thousand dollar. I'm not gonna go and be safe about it. Why would I need to be safe about it? Because I know I know the answer. If I want to be safe, the answer is gonna be twenty years from now, or four, thirty years from now is when I can see the differences. I don't want to. Yeah, but today these days. Ekmer, this uh, Kilmer, this rich is not really rich anymore. I mean, you need a lot of money to get by these days. Okay, I got you that. Yeah, yeah. We, that's that's yeah. why that's why you I'm doing I mean. this. Yeah. Can I add something come here? Yeah, go ahead. I think I agree with you um, because I uh, started years ago, um, and I but I didn't start out as an income investor. And I look back and think if I would have started out just going after um, dividends, I yield. You know, 10, 15 years ago, I would have accumulated more actual cash flow to this day versus the mistakes that I made when I first started out because um, I was buying things that were about growth and I didn't really understand it. And I would sell it off because it wasn't really making me any money and I didn't really understand stocks. But like as you say a lot, you understand how to make money. So when, when I started noticing the income strategy for me personally, it was always easier to follow what I make every month. And if my decisions are making me a better, um, you know, a, a accumulation of funds every month versus what these companies are doing and what the market agrees to say the prices at that time. So fast forward, like we yeah. said, 10 years later, I would have been able to, I don't not say retire, but I, I think I would have been way ahead right now. Well, to be my, fair, and Buki, back back during your time, they don't have it. Your high yield was ten percent. That was yeah, your I high mean, yield. And ten percent over time would have yeah. would have. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I agree. It would be a lot better. That's why a lot of people don't do dividend investing, because when you when you in the eight to twelve percent, you're you're essentially in the uh, dividend yield trap range. That's like what yeah. you know. So. As, so as a result, a lot of people don't want to do that because that's their mm -hmm. high and their their average is essentially the the two percent to three percent, you know, two two to four, you know, three percent. If if a fund can give you three percent, a lot of dividend back then, I'm really very happy. That's why I didn't go into it. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. I I'd rather go in real estate who generate me more dip, uh, a higher yield than than the highest yield, uh, you know, stock or ETF back then. I knew but that, you know. So the reason why, yeah. it, because you had said something that would spark my, what made me think back to how I felt when I first started. Mm -hmm. I didn't start out with a lot of money, mm -hmm. and I would. My friends were like, "Oh, you should buy this, buy that," and the stuff that they were telling me to buy was was a lot of money, and I couldn't accumulate a lot of stock. And yeah. I just told, "Well, why don't I buy stock to start out? Because you know I have a less capital and I accumulate more yeah. stocks." And they'll, "Oh no, not the way." And look, years later, I'm going back to the stop technically that I initially felt the most uh, connected to. So, well, yeah. think it, think about from a, a drug dealer perspective. You're, you're trying to sell pot on the street in a corner in New York City in Boston. You know, I grew up in the city, and you know, you know, you I, you and I know this. What what they're trying to do is you, you, they all they're trying to do is they're not selling drugs. They're trying to convert a product to cash. That's what they're trying to do. If there's another way to convert cocaine, marijuana to cash, they would have done it. They wouldn't sell it to us. They just want mm -hmm. to convert that. They just don't know how. The, the, so the only means to convert that is to sell it to, you know, to, to everybody in, at, the, at the grocery store and, uh, and using, using my people like my friends. I understand that really quickly. So this is, this, is, this is the same thing. At the end of the day, you just need to get cash. Okay, so mm -hmm. why does all the drug dealer want cash? Why does everyone want cash? Because cash gives them mobility. It gives mm -hmm. them freedom and flexibility. It's not it's not power. The power comes from from the it, it, 
I mean, the mobility and all those things come from the cash. You know, and and it's the same way. Investment is the same way. I I understood it right away. So when every time somebody go like, hey, you know, I don't know why you go into high yield. Or I don't know why you do. Well, that's that's a the dumbest question. When somebody somebody when somebody asks me a question like that, it's the dumbest thing. Because we're not buying drugs from a corner street corner. We're buying a fund, an ETF, from the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And so so why would the New York Stock Exchange put something that's faulty, like a drug or, or something? I don't know. Why does the SEC, the US government, does not monitor these things, you know? And so so it's it's a very faulty logic. So you kind of go like, okay, so they, they put this fund up. And they said, hey, we're going to generate it. I, I knew right away that when the fund came out, when I saw the yield at 70 cents, when it was Tesla, I knew right away that that's where, that's where I need to put my money in. I don't really care how they did it. I didn't even know how they did it. I, didn't, I never heard the word options. I don't, know, I don't know anything about it. I still don't know. 11 months later, I still haven't done a single option trade yet. And, but I'm not smarter than when I first started off. And, but all I knew is that this particular fund... It's going to give me a 70% uh, dividend yield at the end of the month. And you know what's good enough for me? And mm-hmm. I don't care about the risk because I'm starting with $1,000. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to risk that. And so because I'm willing to risk that, I'm willing to try it out. Guess what? Uneducated, not knowing anything about the stock market and all that stuff, so is a lot of drug dealers out there in the corner. They don't know it, but guess what? They figured out how to make money and without getting shot. That's that's what you're talking about, being street smart and learning how to navigate the world. You can make fun of all of me you want. A lot of people make fun of me all the time. You can see that some of the comments are pretty brutal. But they don't uh-huh. understand. They just don't understand. It, it's a show how, it, to me, it tells more about the person that's commenting than me. Because a smart person would say, man, that's pretty interesting. How do you do it? I want well, to learn how to... You know yeah. what's crazy yeah. is that as far as, you know, there's a lot of big people in the in the group that you said before make a lot of money off of um, <clears throat> the stock market. And, you know, many people make comments that this is like, right? right? Yeah. Every business, the number one thing is cash. And how much money you are generating. So it's funny, you know, the players that disapprove our style about making our growth through money. Right? Because they, they never def- suffer. They, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people who said that, A, they're not very smart or they never suffer. They have mm-hmm. never suffered. They, I don't know. They, I don't think they understand. So they don't appreciate the value of a dollar. They, yes. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. So if you understand the value of dollar and you, you you hustle for money, if you hustle, you work like we got guys here who work as Uber driver and uh, and you know as you know, you know dash door dashes. He's hustling. He's hustling for money. When you hustle for money, you you will understand real quickly that the cash is true king. It's it's and what you what you're buying. What you get from cash is freedom and mobility and time. 